Hello and welcome to EC Electronics. So today in this video we are going to see about rectangular waveguides. That is one of the difficult topics in electromagnetic theory. We are going to simplify uh, the topic to the exam point of view in this video. Okay, so before going into rectangular waveguides, rectangular waveguides itself is a big topic. So we'll be discussing only about rectangular waveguides in this video. Uh, before going into rectangular waveguides, what are actually waveguides? Waveguides are actually linear structures that conveys electromagnetic waves between its endpoints. That is, they are used to transmit electromagnetic waves from one point to another point. They are, uh, that is, what is the difference between rectangular waveguides and other transmission lines and everything? Rectangular waveguides are actually hollow metallic tubes. If you specifically talk about rectangular waveguides, they are hollow metallic tubes in rectangular shape but if it is circular waveguides it is circular in shape or it can be elliptical also so these are the main types of waveguides so they are hollow metallic tubes and they are used for guiding of electromagnetic waves that's why they are called waveguides okay so the general structure we have already discussed types or the general shapes are can be either rectangular or can be circular or it can be elliptical. So today we are going to see about rectangular waveguides. I have not included all the big big equations, wave equations, simplifications and everything. I have not included in this video but I have included in the notes which will be posted in the Facebook page of EC Electronics. So if you want to see that please uh, do download it from there and you can make notes of it or you can refer. Okay so we will be seeing uh, that is throughout this video we will be seeing only the most important or the most wanted things which you can see in your examinations okay so rectangular waveguides why they are actually having this uh, name called rectangular waveguides because they are rectangular in shape and also they are described in the rectangular coordinates x y and z okay so they are having a shape of rectangle also so it will this is the structure general structure of a rectangular waveguide it is having a breadth of a you should uh, always remember these terms okay whenever you, whenever i say a it is the breadth or it is a wider dimension of the rectangle then b is the narrow dimension or it is a width okay so these two variables are very important a is the breadth and b is the width okay so that's uh, the basic things about rectangular waveguide and they are defined in a rectangular coordinate system this is this is not z this is x okay this is x, this is y and z. Here, throughout this video, we are going to assume that the direction of propagation is in the z direction. Okay, so the wave is actually propagating in z direction. So, we are going to write the equations, everything, electric field, magnetic field equations in terms of z. That is E, is e of z, h of z, we are going to. So anyway, there will be also equations for x and y direction also, but the direction of propagation of the uh, wave through this wave uh, waveguide is in the is a direction okay so it takes a is a direction of propagation now uh, we are going to see about mode so whenever we are uh, saying about waveguides a most common term we hear is modes okay so what is actually modes before seeing what are the modes allowed in this waveguide that is a rectangular waveguide what is actually a mode mode means the various patterns taken by electromagnetic waves within the waveguide that can be either circular or that can be elliptical but the patterns taken by the electromagnetic waves are called modes and in case of rectangular waveguide specifically they are allowing TE and TM modes okay TE means transverse electrical and TM means transverse magnetical okay that is here the electric field is having a transverse direction and this is transverse magnetic field and this rectangular waveguides they doesn't allow TEM there is also transverse electrical and magnetical modes but in rectangular waveguides for the time being we don't have to think about TEM modes we only have uh, that is our interest in TE and TM modes no TEM modes okay so that is the basic thing you should know there is transverse electric field modes or and transverse magnetic field modes is also allowed in the rectangular waveguides now this 
T you can represent it as that is the basic way of representing is T E M N. We'll discuss about M and N. T also transverse magnetic field is represented as T M M N. Okay. Now what is M? What is N? M is the half wave variation along the A. A is the wider dimension. So how much half waves are present in the wider dimension? If you want to simply say it like that, you can say M is the number of half waves present along the wider dimension or you can say it as half wave variation along the wider dimension. Then what is M? Okay, we have discussed about M. What is N? N is the half wave variation along the, the other dimension which is a narrow one and called as B. Okay, so that's why I'm saying you should always remember A is the wider dimension and B is the narrow dimension. So M is the half wave variation along the wider dimension and N is the half wave variation along the narrow dimension which is B. So please make a note of these things. Okay, the detailed note in way you can find it but this is also very important because this is a capsule of and all the required things I have included. Okay, so I hope that that is clear. So you can generally our basic representation of TE is TEMN and TM is T M M N. Okay. So this M and take M and N takes various values at 0, 1, like that, and the modes varies. Okay. There is a half wave along various dimensions varies. And it takes various patterns. That is electromagnetic wave takes various patterns, and hence the mode is created. Okay. So that is the basic way of notating transverse electric field is T E M N and T M M N. Okay. Now Let's uh, have a closer look about the transverse electric field and how its variation is happening based on the values of M. So just consider that there are various modes present in uh, this rectangular wave guides. I'm taking two examples here for T10 mode. You can see this is the wider dimension and here the M value is 1. So there is only one half wave. Okay. Now consider T20. Here this is 0. And here, that is n is 0. Here also n is 0. Here T20 means m is 2. Means there are two half waves along the breadth or the wider dimension. Okay. So, I hope that is clear. Now, if you look into the general structure of your uh, electric field and the magnetic field in the rectangular wave guide, you can see like this. The electric field are in this direction and the magnetic field are perpendicular to that. Always they are in perpendicular most of the time electric and magnetic field are perpendicular to each other so if you take the breadth there you can find electric field and along the width there will be magnetic field this this, this is a general structure of the electric and magnetic field patterns in the rectangular wave grid. so i hope that you have uh, have obtained a basic concept about what is actually mode and what is actually the waveguide and why we are calling this as a rectangular waveguide and how the M and N uh, is actually affecting the modes and how based on the number of M's uh, your waves structure is actually varying along the breadth. So this is a basic, uh, basic things about rectangular waveguide. Now we are going to see in detail about transverse uh, electric field and also then transverse magnetic field and the various waveguide parameters uh, which is happening in this transverse electric field and transverse magnetic field that is for T modes and TM modes how the various waveguide parameters is varying. So nextly we are going to see about the transverse electric modes that is T modes present in the rectangular waveguide. So these are the field equations in X, Y and Z direction. Now, what is transverse electric field? If Z direction is the propagation uh, direction of a wave, then for TE mode, the electric field in that direction will be equal to zero. That is called transverse electric field. So, if the uh, direction of propagation is Z direction, then the electric field in that direction is zero if the mode is transverse electric mode, that is TE mode. Okay. And the the equations for electric field in x direction and y direction is given like this. E of x is equal to E0x. That is the uh, electric field magnitude, absolute magnitude into 
cos m pi x by a into sin n pi y by b into e raised to minus j beta z, where beta is the phase constant. We have already discussed in the uh, previous formula revision video also. You can write the propagation constant uh, uh, gamma is equal to alpha plus j beta, where alpha is the attenuation constant, b is the phase constant. Okay, now Ey is equal to, so these are the uh, the equations for field in various directions. There is x, y and z direction. Here we are making z direction electric field is equal to 0 since it is TE mode. Okay. And the direction of propagation is z direction. So, uh, the rest of the field equations are given like this. You don't need to by heart this. You just have to know that it will be looking like this. Okay. And whenever some question is being uh, given to you, the field equation will be given to you. So, it will be having this general formula. You don't have to by heart any of this, okay. Ey is equal to E0y sin pi uh, m pi x by a into cos n pi y by b e raised to minus j beta z and then these are the magnetic field equations, okay. Anyway, just know that Ez is equal to 0. H of x is equal to H0x sin m pi x by a cos n pi y by b e raised to minus j beta z and similarly for hy and hz. So, if you want to note it down, please note this. These are the equations and just... Uh, the main thing to uh, keep in mind is that the electric field in the z direction will be equal to 0. Now, moving on to the propagation constant. What is actually propagation constant? It is the, uh, the equation representing the propagation of the wave. Here, the propagation is happening in the z direction. Okay. So, the propagation constant is given by, we have discussed about this in the beginning also. Uh, gamma is equal to alpha plus j beta, where alpha is the attenuation constant and beta is the uh, it is imaginary part, it is a phase constant. Now, uh, the propagation constant, it, this is the intrinsic propagation constant. And the propagation constant within the waveguide, we are discussing the waveguide topic, right? So, what is the propagation constant varying or how it is varying in the waveguide? Uh, gamma B, sorry, gamma G, the whole square is equal to alpha, uh, sorry, gamma square plus H square. This is gamma, okay? Gamma G, the whole square is equal to gamma square plus h square where gamma is the intrinsic propagation constant and h is the cutoff wave number okay i have actually written it here you may be not seeing that okay just note that h is the cutoff wave number okay so these are the uh, gamma and h and this is the propagation constant within the waveguide now what is actually h? We have discussed that uh, h is the cutoff wave number. Now, how is this uh, h actually, uh, how can you calculate it? How can you calculate the cutoff wave number of a particular waveguide? h is equal to, this is a very important equation, okay. h is equal to square root of m pi a, the whole square, plus n pi by b, the whole square. That is m pi by a square plus n pi by b square, square root. You can also write it in terms of the angular frequency is equal to omega into c into square root of mu into epsilon. Omega. Now we can make three cases for the propagation constant within the waveguide for transverse electric mode or TE mode for this rectangular waveguide. Okay, so the first case is omega square mu epsilon is equal to h square. So we know that h you can represent in terms of omega c and square root of mu epsilon. Now if you take the squares, omega square mu epsilon is equal to h square, what will happen? See, we can write h in terms of h is omega c square root of mu epsilon. Now what will happen? That is, we are actually forming three cases. This is one case, this is second case and this is third case and we are going to see how the the waveguide's propagation constant or gamma g varies accordance with these three cases. The first case is omega square mu epsilon is equal to h square. When this is happening, then the gamma g will be equal to 0. That is, there is no propagation happening there within the waveguide. Okay. And also, uh, there is another thing to note that consider that f is the operating frequency or the frequency of the wave within the waveguide. And Fc is the cutoff frequency. The frequency of wave F should be greater than Fc. Only then the wave can propagate. That is the importance of cutoff frequency. Okay. So F should be greater than Fc. And only those modes are allowed within the 
waveguide. We'll see about cutoff frequency later. So just know that when this is the condition or omega square mu epsilon equal to h square, then gamma g is equal to 0. Now, the case 2, omega square mu square epsilon greater than h square, then gamma g is only purely imaginary, plus or minus j beta. And this will be the equation, plus or minus j omega square root of mu epsilon into uh, square root of 1 minus fc by f the whole square where fc is the cutoff frequency and f is the operating frequency so just if you're preparing for exam i'm telling it please note these equations and just know that this is happening for the second case and these equations are only important now the third case is when omega square mu square epsilon is less than h square then the gamma g is equal to plus or minus alpha g where alpha g is the real part of the propagation constant or alpha is the attenuation constant, right? So, it is equal to plus or minus omega square root of mu epsilon into square root of fc by f the whole square minus 1. So, these equations are very important and the most important equation present in this board is this one, which is the equation for your cut of wave number, okay, h, what is h and how this cut of wave number is calculated this equation is very important which is square root of m pi by a square plus n pi by b the whole square. So these equations are very important. Uh, you can skip this part if you uh, if you found it difficult to study. Uh, this actually not need to buy heart it. Just have to know that this is the standard form of writing the field equations. Okay. So next we are going to see about the cutoff frequency, uh, phase velocity, group velocity, all those things. Next, we are going to discuss about some of the very important topics, which is uh, cutoff frequency, phase velocity and group velocity. First one is cutoff frequency. So, we have already discussed that only if the frequency of operation F is greater than cutoff frequency, only those modes are allowed. Okay. So, uh, that is the importance of cutoff frequency. Uh, Fc is given by 1 by 2 pi square root of mu uh, epsilon into uh, square root of hx square plus hy square or you can write in terms of uh, the breadth and width that is 1 by 2 pi square root of mu epsilon please study this equation okay into square root of m by a the whole square plus n by b the whole square because most of the times you will be given some uh, modes and you will be asked to find the cutoff frequency okay Next is the phase velocity and group velocity. Phase velocity is a velocity with which the phase is changing. I have written definition below. Velocity with which the wave changes its phase in terms of the guide wavelength. We are going to see about wavelength nextly, but just know that uh, then is, uh, there is the phase change, how the phase change is happening with respect to the guide wavelength. That is called phase velocity. Velocity uh, Vg is given by, or you can say it is, vp okay since it is phase velocity okay since i have written group velocity as vg please correct it as vp vp is equal to omega by beta omega is angular frequency by beta is the phase constant then uh, is equal to c by square root of 1 minus fc by f the whole square or you can write in terms of the wavelength c by square root of 1 minus please correct there is change this term in terms of wavelength lambda 0 by lambda c the whole square okay now what is lambda 0 lambda 0 i've written it here it is free space wavelength lambda c is the cutoff wavelength you know what is fc and you know what is f fc is the cutoff frequency and f is the frequency of operation so this equation is also very very important next is the group velocity group velocity is actually the velocity of uh, or velocity with which the envelope of the wave is traveling see uh, if you uh, pass some modulated wave through this uh, waveguide this modulated wave is having some envelope or some amplitude right you can say envelope as an am amplitude also amplitude variations you call it as envelope so how fast this envelope is moving that velocity is called group velocity and vg group velocity we represent in terms of differential of this phase velocity that d omega by d beta and the most important relation here is vg into v uh, into vp that is phase velocity into group velocity is equal to c square okay then what is the equation for the group velocity vg is equal to c into square root of 1 minus lambda 0 by lambda c the whole square so if you take the product now 
take this equation and this equation it is very clear that if you take the product of vp and vg you will be getting c square okay so this is group velocity phase velocity and cutoff frequency the most important equations here are this equation the equation for cutoff frequency and these two equations and also this equation for the group velocity next we are going to see about the cutoff wavelength cutoff wavelength uh, lambda c is equal to 2 ab by square root of m square b square plus n square a square so we have already seen what is a b m and n okay uh, now for a wave to propagate the wavelength of that wave should be less than the cutoff wavelength okay so that is a condition so that is importance of cutoff wavelength it decides which wavelength uh, it allows and which wavelength it does it so the wavelength of any wave to propagate should be less than the cutoff wavelength now what is guide wavelength that is i have uh, given the definition here guide wavelength is the distance traveled by the wave to undergo a phase shift of 2 pi radians the guide wavelength is given by 2 pi by beta and the relation between the various wavelengths is this 1 by lambda g which is the guide wavelength square is equal to 1 by lambda 0 square minus 1 by lambda c square lambda 0 is the wavelength through free space lambda c is the cutoff wavelength so this is the relation so in some question if somebody is Uh, that is if the question is regarding uh, the guide wavelength and this uh, uh, free space wavelength and cutoff wavelength is been given we have to use this relation now we are going to talk about the wave impedance wave impedance is a g is equal to ex by hy or it is equal to minus ey by hx you can use a small h here or both capital okay uh, and it is given by Uh, that is equal to omega epsilon by beta the unit is volt per ampere in terms of the frequency and wavelengths most of the time you uh, will be given the frequency and wavelength and you will be asked to find the wave impedance then this is the relation wave impedance is at g is equal to eta by square root of uh, 1 minus fc by f square and this is equal to eta by square root of 1 minus lambda 0 by lambda c square Where eta is the intrinsic impedance. Okay, most of the cases uh, we use eta as that is eta to denote intrinsic impedance is equal to square root of mu by epsilon. So these two uh, equations are also very important. And also I will give you a trick to study. See, whenever you are seeing one minus f c by f square, you can replace it always in all the equations. You can see that it can be replaced by square root of one minus lambda zero by lambda c square. You know that. wavelength lambda is equal to c by f right so by using this relation so only thing is you need to study this automatically you should know that you can replace it with the wavelength term also okay anyway this is the wave impedance so we have discussed about cutoff wavelength guide wavelength and also the wave impedance nextly we are going to see about the tm mode so till now we have seen about various uh, properties that is various parameters of the transverse electrical uh field mode that is te mode we have seen and here we know that for te mode e z is equal to 0 that is the electric field in the direction of propagation which is e z we have taken it he said here so that is equal to 0 next we are going to see about tm modes next topic is the transverse uh, magnetic modes that is tm modes okay so general uh, way to denote this tm m n okay so that is the uh, transverse magnetic field modes with m and n are uh, the numbers we have already discussed what is m and what is n so this is the general way of denoting now uh, for transverse magnetic field modes here h is a is equal to 0 since we are considering that is it is a direction of propagation in that direction of propagation the magnetic field or the z component of the magnetic field is equal to 0 now these are the various equations for fields ex ey ez Hx, Hy, and Hz will be equal to zero. So, if you want to note this down, please note it. These are the various uh, equations for the fields in this x, y, and is a direction for electric and magnetic field. Now, we are going to discuss about the various parameters which we have discussed: the cutoff frequency, the wavelength, and everything. The cutoff frequency of C is equal to one by two pi square root of mu epsilon into uh, square root of m square by a square plus n square by b square. Next is beta. Beta is a phase constant and is given by beta is equal to omega square root of mu epsilon into square root of one minus f c by f square. Okay, so this is how 
beta is varying. So what are the changes we have uh, denoted or noted here? So this is how phase constant is changed. Then the lambda g is the guide wavelength and it is equal to lambda by square root of 1 minus fc by f square. Vg is the uh, the uh, velocity which is the group velocity. It is equal to vp uh, by square root of 1 minus fc by f square. Now vp uh, city vg is equal to vp by square root of 1 minus fc by f square when where vp is equal to 1 by square root of mu into epsilon okay so that is vp or you can write it as c 1 by square root of mu epsilon is c okay so you can either write it as vp or c then the intrinsic wave impedance is equal to uh, or the wave impedance is zg is equal to beta by omega epsilon and it is given by the wave impedance is at g is equal to is eta into which is the intrinsic impedance into square root of 1 minus fc by f square or in terms of wavelength you can write it as eta into square root of 1 minus lambda 0 by lambda c square. So these are the uh, the parameters which are varying in the TM modes. Okay? So we have discussed about cutoff frequency, guided wavelength, then group velocity and the wave impedance. Okay. So, these are the various parameters. Now, we are going to see about some of the losses uh, present in, uh, in the, the rectangular waveguides. Next, we are going to see about the various losses present in uh, the waveguides. So, the power losses are mainly happening due to the losses in dielectric and also the losses in the waveguide walls. So, we know that there is a dielectric present uh, within the two conducting surface. For example, a circular waveguide like this or a rectangular waveguide, there is a dielectric material also present within the two conducting surfaces right so there are losses due to this or losses in this dielectric and also losses within the walls of the waveguide okay now uh, let us discuss various conditions and various attenuations happening now when f that is the frequency of operation is less than the cutoff frequency the propagation constant will only have the attenuation tau that is there is no propagation happening there is only attenuation happening and also beta is imaginary and we know that beta is equal to j into 2 pi by lambda g so from that uh, or uh, and also we know that lambda g which is a guide wavelength is equal to lambda by square root of 1 minus uh, fc by f square and if you substitute that in this value in this beta equation it will be beta is equal to j into 2 pi by lambda into square root of uh, 1 minus fc by f square and that can be written as if you take an fc outside j 2 pi fc by c into square root of 1 minus f by fc square that is equal to j alpha. So the conclusion is that when the frequency of operation is less than the cutoff frequency your uh, term that is your propagation constant term will be only having the real part. Okay, So it is having only alpha or the attenuation part. And the value of attenuation uh, constant alpha obtaining is 54.6 by lambda c into square root of 1 minus fc by f uh, square db per length. So this much is the attenuation when the cutoff frequency is less than that of the, sorry, when the operating frequency is less than that of the cutoff frequency. Now, let us discuss about two types of attenuations. One is the attenuation due to the non-magnetic dielectric and the attenuation due to imperfect conducting material. Both are uh, equations I am included. First one is attenuation. See if you can see both terms are represented using alpha. Since alpha is representing the attenuation constant. Uh, so you have to use alpha to represent attenuation. So alpha d which is the attenuation due to non-magnetic uh, dielectric material. Since it is dielectric attenuation alpha d. 27.3 into square root of epsilon r tan delta by uh, uh, lambda 0 into square root of 1 minus fc by f square db per length. Now what is, all these terms are known to you. You know what is lambda 0, fc you know, f you know. Epsilon r is a relative permittivity. Okay. Then what is delta? Delta is the lowest tangent of the dielectric material. Please note that here there is a tan delta. Delta is the lowest tangent of the dielectric material. And you can write, I'll write it here. The lowest tangent, how can you represent the lowest tangent? The delta, you can represent as delta is equal to 
जे सी बाई जे डी और मोर स्पेसिफिकली इन टर्म्स ऑफ द टर्म्स विच वी नो यू ओनली रिक्वायर दैट इक्वेशन राइट डेल्टा इज इक्वल टू सिग्मा जैसे कंडक्टिविटी बाय जे ओमेगा एक्सलॉन ओके सो ऑल टर्म्स आर नॉट टू यू सो दिस इज द लोस्ट एंजेंट डेल्टा इज इक्वल टू सिग्मा कंडक्टिविटी बाय जे एंगुलर फ्रीक्वेंसी इनटू परमिटिविटी ओके सो दिस इज द एटीन्यूएशन ड्यू टू नॉन मैग्नेटिक डायलेक्ट्रिक मटेरियल नेक्स्ट इज द एटीन्यूएशन ड्यू टू परफेक्ट कंडक्टिंग मटेरियल सॉरी इनपरफेक्ट कंडक्टिंग मटेरियल सो इफ द मटेरियल इज नॉट परफेक्टली कंडक्टिंग व्हाट हैपेंस This there can be some attenuation, right? So the uh, attenuation is given by R S by B eta zero, where R S is the surface resistance. We'll see about its equation. Uh, okay, so just know that R S is the surface resistance. Eta zero is the intrinsic impedance, and the value of eta zero is eta zero is equal to three seventy seven ohms. And in terms of the frequency and all, we can represent it as one plus two a by b. Into F C by F square by square root of one minus F C by F square, where F C is the cutoff frequency, F is the frequency of operation. A and B are the the waveguide parameters. A and B A is a wider parameter, B is the narrow one. Now, uh, okay, so this is the low stand and everything. And eta zero, I have told that eta zero is equal to three seventy seven ohms is the intrinsic impedance. Now, what is surface resistance? Surface resistance, R S, is equal to rho by delta. Now, here also there is one delta that is skin depth. I have discussed this skin depth in the transmission line uh, video also. Okay, so what is skin depth? Skin depth is the depth of penetration of the uh, field. Okay. Now, surface resistance R S you can write in terms of a rho, which is the the resistivity by skin depth, or you can write you know that resistivity is equal to one by conductivity, so one by sigma into skin depth. Now, what is the equation for skin depth delta? This is a very famous equation. It is very useful also. Square root of two pi f into mu into sigma. Okay. The skin depth delta is equal to one by square root of two pi f into mu into sigma, where all these terms are known to you. F is the frequency, mu is the permeability, sigma is the conductivity. Okay, so these are the important things you should know about the losses. Okay, next we are going to see a sum up. Uh, that is, we are going to see some of the modes which are actually allowed in the rectangular waveguides. That is, what are the transverse electric modes and the transverse magnetic modes allowed in the waveguide? Okay. So in this video, we have discussed about uh, the very basics of rectangular waveguides. We have seen what are the uh, trans, what is transverse electric mode, what is transverse magnetic field mode or T and TM modes, what is M and N, and also we have seen the various parameters of the rectangular waveguide uh, that is varying in the T and the TM mode. So uh, if you are preparing for any competitive examination, my request is that please just focus on uh, that is more on the equations, most common, most important equations. Uh, rather than studying all the things, please concentrate more on the the. Uh, for example, if you take the cutoff wavelength, what is the most important equation? Note it down. So likewise, please prepare a note that will be helpful for you. And also, I have included the detailed notes of this video uh, in the uh, Facebook page of EC Electronics. I uh, I'll be uploading it very soon after I upload this video. Okay, uh, and uh, from that note also, please prepare a note of your own. Making the most important equations rather than writing all the field equations and everything that you can use for your reference purpose. But for your study purpose, please prepare a note of very important parameters. It's most important equations only. Okay, and also you should have a, a idea about what are these parameters representing. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, I've included uh, some topics which I've not included in this video also in that notes. So please refer that notes. Okay. Next, we are going to see about some of the modes, that some of the transverse electric modes, that is T modes, uh, in this rectangular waveguide. First one is T zero zero mode. So we know that the general form is T M N. So if it is T zero zero, then M is zero, N is zero, and also this mode doesn't actually exist because all the field components vanish. Okay. Next mode is T one zero mode, and this mode is the dominant mode. So every rectangular waveguide is having a dominant mode. 
and the dominant mode its feature is that it is having the lowest cutoff frequency and hence the maximum wavelength right so t10 is the dominant mode please note it down it is very uh, important and it is sometimes been asked in theory session also okay which is the dominant mode in a rectangular wave gun it is t10 here m is 1 n is 0 and the field uh, fields are ex is equal to 0 hy is equal to 0 and also ey and hx exist and it is the dominant mode then the next mode is t11 mode here m is 1 and n is 1 next we are going to see how the cutoff wavelength is varying for these three modes for t10 mode which is the dominant mode cutoff wavelength has to be maximum right because the frequency is minimum so lambda c which is the cutoff wavelength for t10 so lambda c10 is 2a where a is the breadth so there is a if this is a rectangular waveguide there is this is the wider session this is the narrow session and a is the wider session so it is 2a is the so uh, that is if you know these equations it is easy for you to do the numerical problems okay so the cutoff wavelength for 1 0 mode is 2a and for 0 1 mode is lambda c 0 1 is 2b next the cutoff wavelength for 1 1 mode is lambda c 1 1 is 2 a b by square root of a square plus b square why it is coming is because in the uh, cutoff wavelength equation you are putting m as 1 and n as 1 so it will be changed as 2 a b by square root of a square plus b square okay so these are the some of the important modes and its cutoff wavelengths okay so this is the summary of your rectangular waveguide so we have discussed about the field equations we have discussed about the basics of uh, rectangular waveguide why the name is coming what are the various parameters of the t and tm mode and also we have discussed we have discussed about some of the important modes and its cutoff wavelengths okay so uh, in the notes i have included some power equations also uh, if you want to uh, refer it refer but i don't think that any numerical question uh, can come from that session because it is a little bit difficult okay anyway if you are preparing for isro exams or gate exams this video is very very important for you please prepare a decent note of this and it will be very useful for you for your lifetime for any competitive examinations okay so i really hope that you found this video useful please share this video maximum and do give it a thumbs up and if, if you found it useful and if you want more videos please do subscribe to the channel thanks for watching and keep on watching and don't forget to follow the page of facebook uh, that is facebook page of ec electronics and also the instagram thank you for watching and keep on watching.